Fast snacks, fast food, fast reviews. Snack Masters Inc., a podcast served to you in 30 minutes or less. Snack Masters Incorporated. Snack Masters. Snack Masters. You'll be snacking with the Snack Masters. Snack Masters. Hello and welcome to Snack Masters Incorporated. I'm Dooner, here with the man who makes Mr. Potato Head look like the Mona Lisa. It's MSG! How are you, buddy? I'm great, man. How are things going over there? It's cold, brother. It's cold, man. It was 8 degrees out, but then when I checked the weather app, it said it feels like it's negative 8. And I have a question for you, man. Who is the person who decides what it feels like outside? Because if it was me, when I took my dog out, I would have been like, yeah, I don't know. It feels freaking cold, dude. Yeah, I don't know how they pinpoint that. I don't know if they have some kind of algorithm or, or what, or if it's just the whatever weather man comes goes out. I, I can't tell the difference between negative 2 and negative 8. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody must be able to. I think it's how quick it, it's how quick your hands hurt when you're pumping your gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, uh, I, I'm about done with winter already, man. What do you think? Yeah, I mean the doldrums come in. I, I've said before, I love the holiday season leading up to it, but you know, Christmas blows through and then New Year's blows through. You take the Christmas tree down, and then it's just the gray doldrums. At least out here in the Northeast, I can imagine Idaho cannot be much better. It probably is worse. Yeah, we get just tons of snow, tons of slush, just bad driving, and yeah, it's horrible. I'm over it. I got a black hat too, dude, and it's always <laughs> covered in uh, like that white road salt. It's just it. There's no point in like cleaning it or washing it. Yeah, that's one reason I I, I won't. I've I've sworn off black cars. I owned one before, and it just they never look clean during the winter here. But there is one thing to look forward to, and that's the NFL playoffs coming up. It's been, uh, I would say, kind of an interesting season. There's been so many injuries and everything, but on the other hand, you had, uh, you know, some young teams coming back in the fold. You have the Jaguars, which is, you know, interesting to see. There's the Titans. I don't know how seriously anyone takes them. Here in Westport, Chiefs Kingdom's flags hang proudly in the streets, but every fan we talked to today was disappointed. Chiefs Kingdom felt the game change at halftime. I'm like a jinx. Every time I come to Kansas City, we lose. Joe Colombo flew in from Tucson for the wild card game. I had so much red gear in my luggage thinking we had this. But today, he's wearing a Royals hat. My name is Carol Key. This is my niece, Gina, and my grandson, Ben. And we drove 22 hours from Kansas City, Missouri. To What's wrong, buddy? I don't know. It's been it's been an interesting playoff season. It kind of seems like a Steeler Patriot race on uh, on one end, and um, I don't know. Do you have a horse on this on either side? I think it's going to be the Patriots again. I mean, they're just they put it together, and it's kind of like Alabama in college football. They're always around. They're always a threat. I, I like to see the Rams do it. I think it's cool that they finally got rid of uh, Jeff Fisher. He just seemed to be like a perennial eight and eight overrated coach and they you know they bring in this new guy and he he's just tearing it up i think it's i think it's really cool what they've done over there yeah that dude's like 32 so he got his like education in football playing playing john madden over there <laughs> but um jeff fisher whenever i see him i always just i picture his like mustache smelling heavily of dip <laughs> and not like cheese dip like like tobacco dip right like spittle yeah him and again i think it's him and like andy reed that are just uh, I don't know. They're, they're decent. I think they carry a really heavy reputation and all that stuff, but they just they just can't put it together. I don't understand the you know all the reverence that they get. Yeah. Well, you know what? Hey, man. Speaking of dips, I got some port wine pub cheese, which is some of my favorite. I got some hell of a good dip, and I got uh, a new snack, a new chip I've never had before in my life, and uh, an old standby as well, so I could taste some of these dips in. The first one I got here is the Snyder of Hanover braided twist. Honey wheat made with real honey. And it looks like some of these Snyder products, I don't know if all of them, but at least this one is non-GMO. So as usual, if that's the thing that uh, gets you moving and motivated, the Snyder's is now 
non-GMO. And it's very interesting how, you know, just consumer market demand has shifted the health food aisle to the regular aisle, at least as insofar as uh, these non-GMO things go. There's, you know, they realize people like to buy things that say that on it. So they're like, what the hell? Why not? Right. Mm-hmm. These are uh, 120 calories. You're going to get two grams of fat in here. You're going to get three grams of protein, four grams of sugar. There must be a little honey in there. You get about seven pretzels, relatively substantial. I notice myself usually taking about three servings of these things, though, when I uh, when I nuzzle up with them on the couch. What I thought to pair them with is one of my favorite things. It's this port wine cheddar cheese snack bread. It's made with the real Wisconsin cheese, not that fake stuff your mother buys. It's got um, a <laughs> great taste, old fashioned quality. Keep refrigerated. It's good stuff. It's uh, two tablespoons, 100 calories, eight grams of fat, four grams of protein. Yeah, it's like it's packed cheese. I mean, it's packed cheese spread. It's pub cheese. I'm going to dip one of my pretzels in here. And this, during the playoffs, during the Super Bowl, this is this is always, you know, this is always an old standby. This is a lullaby to my heart. This is a this is a classic. This is a munchable on my mandolin. <laughs> mm. You know, these Snyder's pretzels. And do you have a favorite brand of pretzels? Do you go towards, like, the Snyder's? Do you go towards the Mr. Who's, is that Mr. Pretzel? Who's the rod? Mr. Salty. Is it? Is that his name? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I know Utz makes one. Or Utz? 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 How does that go? Utz? Utz? <laughs> guess is as good as mine, right? <laughs> I think I guess like every way you could possibly say that. I was like, Utz? Utz? Yeah. Well, <laughs> as far as pretzels go, my favorite are the honey wheat. And I do like the Snyder's, but I also like the Trader Joe's one with that like mountain climber on the bag a little bit better than these. But the thing is, Trader Joe's sort of has this fatal flaw that they only carry their own products. So like you'll go in Trader Joe's, but they only have their pub cheese. And I don't like their pub cheese as much as I like like the old fashioned port wine. For example, this brand is old fashioned cheese. So what will happen is I'll have the Trader Joe's, my favorite pretzel with the pub cheese that I don't like as much or the pub cheese I do like as much with the pretzel I don't like as much. Although I would say that this port wine pub cheese is better than the Trader Joe's pub cheese because theirs is more of like a creamy consistency where I prefer like more of a hard packed, almost like cream cheese consistency to my my pub cheese spread. Mm. But yeah, one day I got to treat myself MSG and I got to go to uh, Trader Joe's and get the pretzels I like and then stop at the other grocery store and get the uh, the port wine cheese. Yeah, indulge yourself a little bit there, man. Well, the thing is, like, this isn't new to me at all. So there's nothing really extra special to say about these because I have them all the time. But this port wine cheese is the old fashioned cheese brand is my favorite one so i'm giving it a 10 out of 10 it's one of the best spreads this stuff is wicked dangerous i do not i do not bring the tub with me to the couch i do scoop out two tablespoons and then try to call it a night with that unless it's uh i don't know i'm, I'm depressed and i need the dopamine or um i'm watching a, a sad movie <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that we hit on these pretzels because I've just recently kind of rediscovered within the last few days these uh, rolled gold cheddar flavor. Uh, my daughter busted some out. They looked tempting to me, so I, I ate some, and I was I couldn't stop eating them. My wife reminded me that I'd had them before. I don't remember having them because they're they just hit my palate the right way, and I kept pounding on them. These things are uh, absolutely delicious. You get ten in the bat, uh, ten per serving, 110 calories, 1.5 grams of fat. Um, um, good amount of sodium in there, but uh, to be expected with the pretzel. And they're just these small kind of, they're the, how to really describe the size of the, uh, I'm bad at that. Anyways, they're, uh, they're, they're kind of dusted with the uh, cheddar flavoring. You know, I didn't pair these with dip because I think they just, they stand alone on their own. It's a really bold flavor. I'd give these a 10. They're freaking delicious. They're the, they're the ch- chicken in the biscuit of, of pretzels, if you ask me. I'm going to keep buying these. So these aren't stuffed in the center like a combo? No, no. They're just, like I said, they're just a plain kind of uh, standard, small, a little bit bigger than a quarter size pretzel, thin, crispy, and just uh, dusted with cheddar flavored salt or powder it's delicious you know that's a big value item when you don't need a dip for something because for example like these pretzels are 369 and then the dip is like i think it was on sale for 299 but that's a you know you're starting to get some expensive snacking going on when you do too many of these pairings yeah you're right i never really even thought of that so i i went ahead and uh i went ahead and bought some pub cheese and what i chose to to pair them with was something that i kind of figured was sort of bland they're these uh seven ancient grains rice crackers this brand uh simple truth they're the ones who like to tout the fact that they're free of 101 artificial preservatives ingredients again we talked about that i don't know what it means on their own wait who's the pub cheese by oh yeah sorry that's president president brand and i'll tell you this uh this eight ounce tub was 650 so it's kind of hit to the wallet there whoa i know right 
on these own, these chips are on their own. These chips are pretty gross. They got kind of that shiny coating on them that you see with some of these rice crackers. I don't know what that's all about, just to maintain freshness. They're pretty bland. I don't really enjoy the flavor, but I, I'm hoping this pub cheese will add some to it because I really like pub cheese. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, this is a cheddar and horseradish flavored pub cheese. Man, I, I love horseradish. That's one of my favorite. Yeah, this is pretty good. Yeah, and you get a, you know, a relatively small serving here. Two tablespoons is what you're supposed to get. It's got 80 calories, uh, 7 grams of fat, so you shouldn't eat much of it. Seven or 4.5 of that saturated, so not the healthiest of snacks, but you don't eat very much of it. And uh, it really livens up these boring crackers. I'm actually going to ditch these crackers. They're, they're pretty gross, even with this dip carrying them. Pub cheese is freaking phenomenal. Pub cheese, I think, is, is you know, in some circles thought of as this lowbrow thing. And uh, you mentioned that there's a, a type of it that's rolled in nuts. You know, this is kind of like the unnutted version just thrown into a tub. And then you can, you know, you could dip pretzel rods in here. You could take a knife and you could spread it on crackers. But I think that, it, yeah, you know, it really beefs anything up. You could put this on a saltine and now you got a killer saltine. You could put it on a pretzel and you got a great pretzel. You can put it on something really dull like that rice cracker. And you, now you have a much stronger rice cracker. And then you can start getting really creative and you can, you know, you can make little sandwiches with them and stack things on top of them. You can put uh, broccoli in here. I've done that. That's really good. Yeah, I'm going to rail against uh, that that perception of pub cheese here because again this is this was 650 and that's i'm eating this with my pinky out man um this is more of a high-end snack to me so whoever decided pub cheese was lowbrow can they're cut off well i said it was a little back alley but um <laughs> all right so i mean moving on I, I think these are both good pairings so hey if you got a super bowl party if you never had pub cheese i highly recommend it pub cheese pairs really well with braided honey wheat sliders pretzel twist i don't think i gave those a rating i am gonna give them a 7.5 or an 8 with a uh, 9 or a 10 being trader joe's variant of the same exact thing yeah with these rice crackers i'm gonna give them a one i think they're they're horrid i i, I can't see eating any more of these the the texture the flavor the whole thing is wrong with me and uh the pub cheese spread man this is really good i'm gonna give that an eight or a nine it's kind of the fluffier kind of whipped variety so it uh you can just kind of slide your cracker across the top and get get quite a bit you don't have to worry about breaking the cracker or not being able to spread it out it, it's phenomenal so my other cracker here I'm not a cracker. I'm sorry. This is a chip. I saw these in the grocery store today in the health food aisle. Not a whim. I, I just had to. They're oven baked pizza chips. They're by a company called Napoli's. And Napoli's is actually a brand out of Chicago. I, I'd never heard of them before. It says on here, oven baked pizza chips, tomato and basil flavor made from real pizza dough. What do you got going on? You got 10 crisps for you, for your serving with 140 calories, 5 grams of fat, 3 grams of protein, no sugar because it's a chip. It says inspired for love, authentic Italian pizza and a passion for all things snackable. Mangia. Mangia. Or is that my Manja, manja, manja. Is the eye silent? Manja? Manja. What does mangia mean? What is a mangia? Man genius. It's a judge coach, sweetie. <laughs> I should go say hello. I don't Chuck Mangioni. I know him, but manja oh, means wow. eat, All right. to eat in Italian. So. <laughs> All right, man. So I'm going to I'm gonna go into these. These things look pretty thick. Let's see what the crunch factor is. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, is there an earthquake in here? Or am I just eating pizza chips? <laughs> oh, my God. My water's shaking. It's like when the T-Rex is coming in Jurassic Park. Mm. Well, mm. all right, dude. For all that crunch, though, all that crunch, you're not getting a ton of flavor. And it is kind of. I mean, I don't. I'm not gonna dispute the fact that this is made out of pizza dough because it kind of does just taste a little, a little doughy. And I'm really glad that I got another dip to pair with this. I got the hell of a good dip flavored with Tabasco. It's new. It's a limited edition. And with this, you get two tablespoons for a serving, 50 calories, 4.5 grams of fatty fat, two <laughs> carbs, and one gram of protein. This is with Tabasco. So I'm expecting some heat here. And uh, much like your rice crackers, these oven-baked pizza chips are going to need a, a, a flavor kick in the butt. So and a little like, moisture, too. I don't know. Hold on. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> Have you ever had any of these things before? These pizza chips or hell of a good dip? No, no, I haven't. What do you think? I like this hell of a good dip. I'm a fan of the hell of a good dips. I, I typically will gravitate towards like the French onion that they have. This Tabasco, I'm liking a lot though because it doesn't just come at you with a haymaker. It comes in rather soft and delicate and, and just creamy, almost like a uh, like a dip pudding of sorts. And then once it settles kind of in on the back of your tongue and in your throat, that's when you start really feeling the Tabasco, but it's not overpowering. It's really nice. This would be, I don't know if this is great with these pizza chips, but this would be a very, very good dip with, with vegetables with, um, or, you know, some cherry tomatoes or something to that effect, some celery, some carrots, 
Definitely carrots. Yeah. So I'm going to give the dip. I'll give the dip an eight, but these oven baked pizza chips. Yeah. I don't know. I can't really recommend them. I don't think I would, I would really get these again. They're not. I don't know. They're like a three or a four. Sorry, Napoli's. Well, my whole plan was to dip some of these seven ancient grains rice crackers into some Sabra or Sabra roasted garlic hummus. It's non-GMO, gluten-free. Uh, it's kind of a staple in our house. I don't think it's really, you know, all that uncommon. It's pretty much available at any grocery store. But uh, I can't, I can't eat any more of these rice crackers. They're they're disgusting. So I went ahead and did the rolled gold hummus, and I I don't understand with this hummus. I you know it's kind of that one with like the middle section there with just a bunch of chopped garlic and uh, roasted peppers looks like in there. Um, I don't know. You're supposed to stir that. Are you a connoisseur of this? Do you stir it in together, or how does that? Uh, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, you can go either way. You can when you first open. I know what you're talking about that little pool in the middle. Yeah, you can dip right into that if you want. But I think that ideally, most people would kind of stir all the flavors together, sort of like when you get you know like a Dan and fruit on the bottom yogurt. You would you don't just eat the top yogurt and then wait to get to well, some people I do uh, maybe I do. And they wait till the bottom, but you know in general you would stir it up. Okay, because I tend to you go straight for the fruit at the bottom, then just chuck the yogurt. No, I eat the yogurt off the top and just kind of fight my way through that because the stuff at the bottom by itself is. is this is so good. <laughs> yeah, I, I tend to kind of just sort of portion out a little bit of this stuff in the middle and then kind of slide it across the other stuff, uh, just the plain hummus. But yeah, this this Sabra or Sabra, whatever, is is really good. And it kind of, with the garlic, it sort of overpowers the, the cheddar. I think it's with the garlic, it's going to dominate any uh, vehicle that it's delivered with. But it's really good. I really, I think of the ones I've tried, this is probably my favorite brand of hummus. Uh, my daughter just just pounds of stuff. I'd give it a nine and uh, it, it pairs really well. I, what I'd really like to do just to go, you know, over the top with it is chicken and a biscuit. Try it with that. Oh, wow. Chicken and a biscuit really doesn't need anything. I, I know, but I'm, I'm just, I'm curious as to how it would pair. I'm going to have to try that as soon as we get off the air here. All right. Well, you mentioned to those real quick because we want to talk about The Last Jedi because I know you saw that. So while you're digesting that, I'm just going to do a quickie here on this because I want this out of my house. It's already it's been in my face. So long. It's the Hershey's Gold Peanuts and Pretzel Bar Caramelized Cream. And you'll notice something if you look at Hershey's bars. And I'm not going to use a word here because they don't use a word here. And that word is chocolate because this doesn't contain any <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> in fact, only a few things by Hershey's contain chocolate like their Hershey's Kisses. Those are milk chocolate. But most of these bars are not. And this Hershey's Gold Peanuts and Pretzels is uh, it's a candy bar. It looks like chocolate, but it specifically does not use the word chocolate because it cannot legally. So how does this pseudo chocolate taste? Hmm. It's interesting. I mean, it's not bad. We have a it's, it's almost like a white chocolate. It's got a little bit of caramel mixed into it. It's got some pretzel here. I think the pretzel pieces, I might like them to be a little bit bigger. But, you know, all in all, even though it's fake pseudo chocolate, I like this particular bar. It's got 220 calories, 14 grams of fat. How much sugar in this bad boy? 20 grams of sugar. So I don't know. Maybe eat half at a time, but not entirely terrible. Have you had the Hershey's Gold Bar yet? No, I actually saw them last night on a display when I was getting my other stuff. And I, I saw, I almost picked one up. They had them on sale for a buck there. They're trying to blow them out. Uh, the color to me is off-putting. Just even the, the, the color of the bar on the, you know, on the display, I just thought, yeah, I don't know. No. Didn't look like something I'd want to eat. I think it's confusing to people because it looks like it would be caramel, but it's not really caramel. I don't know. There's a little hint of it riding underneath. But uh, I mean, it's an all right special edition bar. I don't know if it needs to be in the rotation. I'll give it uh, a six. I mean, I like peanuts and pretzels. Not the biggest fan of Hershey's chocolate or fake chocolate, but I don't know. Do they use Hershey's and M&M's? Or is M&M's M &M's his own company? M&M's is Mars. That's why those are so good. I won a uh, I won a candy count over Christmas, by the way. Wow. Where you had to count a jar full of M&Ms and peanut M&Ms. Did you have a strategy or just guess? Well, yeah. So I counted up and then I counted the ring around the circumference and I got a number there. And then I wasn't sure how to calculate the depth, though. So I just multiplied that number by itself. I came up with 444. And I believe the real answer is 543. But everybody was under... 444, except for someone who gets 600. So my one strategy, though, was that I know that people tend to underestimate in those things. So I did go a little bit higher. Interesting. Good. Dude. Congratulations. But did you win the M&Ms or? Yeah, I got, so I got 50 bucks and the M&Ms. Wow. And then, you know, it was regular M&Ms and peanut M&Ms. And then it, as I'm eating it, I'm like, why? What, what's the need for regular M&Ms in a world with peanut M&Ms? I just wish I had more peanut M&Ms. <laughs> 
Well, you got 50 bucks to spend on peanut m and so there you go. All right, all right. You're right. I shouldn't even be complaining. <laughs> hey, how is that chicken and a biscuit in hummus? I don't know if that sounds like a good flavor combo, but you're trying it. Uh, I got to tell you, this is uh, this is phenomenal. Uh, again, you know, I, I, I try to avoid the garlic itself with this just because I didn't want to overpower the, uh, the chicken flavor, but just chicken and biscuit with hummus is unbelievable i think i found a new favorite snack i'll probably watch it during or uh, i'll probably eat it while i'm watching football this is uh, oh tie it back to the beginning is it better than a chicken and a biscuit oreo yeah you know it's hard to compare they're two different worlds I, i'm not even gonna try i don't, I don't want to pit chicken and biscuit against itself that's like uh that's just something i wouldn't do all right man well Well, actually, we're going to talk about The Last Jedi, and there may be some spoilers in that. So I'll give you a chance to tune out now. I'm going to just do our our read-through for our show. We'll talk about The Last Jedi, and then we'll get out of here. So we're Snackmasters Incorporated. Our website is snackmastersinc.com. That's I-N-C, not I-N-K. We're on Instagram, instagram.com slash snackmastersinc. There you can find all of our food photos, mini reviews, some videos. Speaking of videos, we're also on YouTube, YouTube Snackmasters Inc. If you want to tweet at us at Snackmasters Inc. And if you'd like to email us with your comments, suggestions, or things we should review, snackmastersinc at gmail.com. We're going to talk about The Last Jedi now. There may be spoilers. So I implore you to tune out. Otherwise, you have been warned. So MSG, three, two, one. Right. You must have a thousand questions. Where's Ray? Something inside me is awake. I need help. We are the spark that'll light the fire that'll burn the first order down. I was raised to fight. For the first time, I had something to fight for. PG-13. You saw The Last Jedi last night. What did you think? I loved it, man. And I, you know, I, I hate, to, I don't, I try really hard. I, I don't pick these movies apart. I don't try to critique them. There's always something with movies that just doesn't make sense. They, they kind of compress them to fit, you know, into a, a palatable amount of time and all that stuff. But I, I love it. And, and another thing I refuse to do, Dooner, is to rank them. I, I don't respect anybody's ranking. I don't participate in ranking them i see it as one linear story that being said i didn't like the you know the prequels thought they were just bad acting and all that crap but i just i loved it i was engaged throughout the whole movie my son loved it i'm I'm gonna buy it just like i did with all the other ones love the whole experience yeah well i am gonna rank them right in your face empire (laughs) strikes back return of the jedi a new hope rogue one the force awakens ewok adventure (laughs) then the last jedi then uh, the prequel is in descending order. So I would say three, two, one. You are so right. So that's my that's my ranking on this. But you know what show I've been watching is Rebels with uh, Snackmaster Jr., the Disney XD show. We've been enjoying that. I have not seen Clone Wars before because I think they remind me too much of the prequels. And then I just get I get angry when I watch the prequels. Although there is a, a fan edit on YouTube. If you look up Star Wars Neon Noir, someone edited it down to like an hour and 40 minutes, all three prequels. It's a good watch if you just want a refresher of what happened in the prequels, but one, don't want to have to deal with wasting the time to watch them again. Yeah, those were monumentally disappointing to me. I was so looking forward to the return of Star Wars, and then when I saw them, I was just uh, ugh, horrible. When I first saw The Last Jedi, when I left the theater, I think I was at like an A minus. No, I was at like a B plus with it. But then I saw it a few more times. Um, I happened upon a. Uh, I, I just saw it in other ways outside of the theater. Okay, and it was. Uh, <laughs> I was watching so much Periscope. God damn it! No, it was. Um, I just liked it a little bit less each time, and maybe it's because I wasn't in the theater. But some of the scenes, the real weaknesses in them, were were coming through. Well, you saw- Mainly like the trip to Canto Bite. I thought the training with Ray could have been better developed and better handled. I I really liked Kylo Ren in it though, and I I wish we were with him more. And instead of maybe the Canto Bite storyline, maybe we got a little bit more on the First Order, Snoke, how all that stuff came to be. Maybe more of an Empire focused movie instead of just you know it, it just seemed like they had to do that Canto Blight thing because they had nothing else for Finn to do, and they introduced him as such a main character in the last one that they just had to have like. Poe do stuff and hit and Finn and Poe and Poe ends up getting like the entire bomb squad killed and then like you learn how monumentally stupid that is the second he gets on Leia's ship because she's like well that was like our you know now we have four ships left and then like Laura Dern shows up 
And she's like, yeah, I'm not going to tell you anything because I hate you, Poe, because you're a moron. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then his stupid plan ends up getting them almost all killed anyway because uh, Finn gets, you know, by Benicio Del Toro turned in. I don't know. So much of it, some of it didn't sit well with me. Some of it did. I, You know, I thought like in the movie theater moment, people complain about the astral projected Luke thing. I thought, you know, in the theater, everyone cheered. And I thought it was uh, I thought it was a pretty cool moment, too. Oh, good. Thanks for uh, making me hate it now. Um, <laughs> I was uh, uh, just enjoying my oblivion and uh, resigned to it and loved the movie. But now, yeah, I'll have to watch again more skeptically and probably like it less. No, don't. <laughs> don't let my cynicism ruin you. All right, man. So so you don't give them rankings. You just you just say like or don't like. Yeah, I see it as linear. I see it as, you know, obviously, uh, no, I like I like the six of them. I don't like the three of them. How's that? I mean, I, the five of them, say, you know, other than the prequels. All right. MSG, may the force be with you. And you as well. And also with you. Whatever. <laughs> Snackmaster <laughs> Jr. <laughs> Astral project us out of here. I hate tea. Why do you hate tea? T hates me. T hates you? Mm-hmm. Uncle Jason said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I don't believe you. I didn't know that Uncle Jason disliked tea so much. <laughs> I've never seen him drink tea, though. <laughs> Snack Master Incorporated Snack Master